Hey guys, I'm John, and today we're here at the Mishimoto Garage to install the Mishimoto Cooling Package for the 2011 Plus Chevy and GMC 6.6 liter Duramax. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome Duramax videos. During this install today, we're going to be covering the Mishimoto Performance Intercooler, the Mishimoto Performance Aluminum Radiator, Mishimoto Performance Silicone Hose Kit, and the Mishimoto Hot Side and Cold Side Intercooler Pipe and Boot Kit. Let's start the install. Tools needed for install include 7 mm socket, 10 mm deep socket, 11 mm deep socket, 13 mm socket, quarter drive ratchet, quarter drive 6 inch extension, 1 and a quarter inch socket, half inch ratchet, 10 mm ratchet wrench, 12 mm ratchet wrench, Phillips head screwdriver, flat head screwdriver, a pick tool, channel lock pliers, needle nose pliers, pop clip pliers, hose clamp tool, and coolant. Install time is anywhere from six to eight hours, and install difficulty is a five out of five. Remove the six pop clips, six seven millimeter bolts, and two 10 millimeter bolts, holding the fender liner on the driver's side. Note that the fender liner on the passenger side has the same hardware, but it only has five pop clips. Disconnect the four tree clips attached to the fender liner. Remove the 10 pop clips holding the diversion plate in place. Disconnect the three electrical connections from the mass airflow sensor. Loosen the intake boot clamp and slide the clamp off. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, remove the two Phillips head screws on the top of the intake. Slide the intake boot off and lift upward. Remove the air filter. Next. Remove the intake box by pulling upward. Loosen and disconnect the quick disconnect clip on the coolant outlet hose. Remove the coolant hose slowly. If the coolant hose is removed too quickly, coolant will pour out everywhere. Remove the four 10 mm bolts and six clips holding the grill in place. Each headlight has three 10 mm bolts. Remove these bolts and partly remove the headlights. Disconnect the electrical connection before fully removing the headlights. Remove the one tree clip on the headlight shroud. Loosen the two 10 mm bolts that the AC condenser is attached to the support bar. Two 13 mm bolts connect the intercooler to the support bar. Remove these bolts. Next, you want to remove the support bar. This is held in place with nine 10 mm bolts. Next, you want to remove the upper radiator hose. In order to do so, you need to squeeze the clamp until it clicks, and then remove the clamp and the hose. Zip tying this hose out of the way makes it a lot easier to work in your engine bay. Remove the three tree clips holding the battery wire to the upper fan shroud. Remove the coolant reservoir hose from the radiator. Detach the clip for the AC line and move it out of the way. Disconnect and remove the TCM harness on the upper fan shroud. In order to remove the upper fan shroud, you need to remove the two pop clips on the top and the two pop clips on either side of the shroud. Once these are removed, you can lift the upper fan shroud out of the way. Remove the lower fan shroud by pulling up on the tabs and moving the shroud out of the way. Leave the shroud in the engine bay. Using an 11 mm socket, remove the clamp holding the hot side boot on the intercooler. Remove the boot from the intercooler. Again, using your 11 mm socket, remove the clamp holding the hot side boot on the turbo. Next, we want to remove the cold side pipe. This one's tricky, and you want to use a flathead screwdriver and make quarter turns clockwise and pull at the same time to help remove the plastic pipe. Remove the transmission lines by first removing the dust boots and then the quick disconnect clamps. There are two transmission lines, and they each have one clip and one dust boot. You're going to reuse the quick disconnect clips, so make sure not to lose them. Remove the hose from the overflow basin using a pair of pliers. Then remove the hose. Remove the hose from the auxiliary coolant port.
Remove the stock hose from the lower hose inlet. Have a bucket ready as excess coolant will flow out everywhere. If you are installing the Mishimoto coolant hose kit, remove the tree clip and then the hose assembly. Now you're ready to remove the radiator and intercooler assembly from your LML. This assembly is pretty heavy, so it might help to have a friend. Now that you have the entire assembly out of the truck, remove the four 13 millimeter bolts holding the radiator to the intercooler. Transfer the four bushings and mounting spacers to the Mishimoto intercooler. Transfer the two upper rubber bushings and the transmission fittings to the Mishimoto radiator. Use the four Mishimoto provided M6 by 10 bolts and washers to attach the Mishimoto intercooler to the Mishimoto radiator. This hardware is only provided with the Mishimoto intercooler. If you are using a factory intercooler with the Mishimoto radiator, you reuse the factory hardware. Make sure to tighten the transmission fittings on the Mishimoto radiator using one and a quarter inch socket. If you're installing the Mishimoto silicone hose kit, it's easiest to slide the kit through the passenger side fender area. Reattach the hose to the lower hose inlet. Reattach the hose to the auxiliary coolant port. Now you're ready to install the Mishimoto radiator and intercooler. Additional assistance might be required as the assembly is heavy. Be sure the lower intercooler bushings sit in the factory mounting holes. Reattach the lower fan shroud to the Mishimoto radiator. Place the upper fan shroud back into the truck and reinstall the TCM harness before mounting it down. Reattach the upper fan shroud with the six pod clips you removed earlier. Reattach the upper support bar using the nine 10 millimeter bolts. Mount the intercooler to the support bar. If you're installing a Mishimoto intercooler, use the two M8 by 125 bolts and washers. If you're installing the factory intercooler, use the two 13 millimeter bolts and washers you removed earlier. Reinstall the one 10 millimeter bolt holding the bracket on the driver's side. Using the two 10 millimeter bolts from earlier, reinstall the radiator support to the cross member. Reinstall the two quick disconnect clips on the transmission adapters. Now you want to reinstall the transmission lines. Push these into place until the quick disconnect clips. Reinstall the dust covers. Reinstall your cold side pipe. If you're installing the Mishimoto cold side pipe, you will use three boots to connect your pipes from the intercooler to the intake. Tighten your boots with the Mishimoto provided constant tension T-bolt clamps. Transfer the IET sensor from the factory piping to the Mishimoto piping using a 12 mm wrench. Reinstall the overflow hose on the radiator. Reinstall the lower radiator outlet hose. You'll know this is attached when you hear it click. Reinstall your hot side pipe. If you're installing the Mishimoto hot side pipe, you will use the three boots to connect the pipes together. Make sure to use the provided constant tension T-bolt clamps. In order to install the Mishimoto upper hose, first, remove the factory hose with pliers. 
Make sure the provided T-bolt clamps are already on the hose before installing the Mishimoto hose. Reinstall the lower portion of the airbox by pushing it into place. Reinstall the air filter. Reinstall the upper section of the airbox with the two Phillips head screws. Reconnect the three electrical connections. Reattach the electrical connector for the headlights. Reattach the headlights. Each headlight uses the three 10 mm bolts you removed earlier. Reattach the front grille using the six clips and four 10 mm bolts from earlier. Next, you want to reinstall the diversion plate. Once it's in place, reuse the 10 pop clips. Now you're ready to reattach the fender liners. Reattach the four tree clips to the fender liner. Reinstall the fender liner on the driver's side using the six pop clips, six 7mm bolts, and two 10mm bolts. Remember that the fender liner on the passenger side only has five pop clips. Here, it's also easiest to use the pop clips to hold the fender liner in place and then attach the bolts. Now that you've wrapped up your install, double check to make sure that all your connections are tight and make sure that your cooling system is properly bled. If you're not familiar with how to bleed your cooling system, check out our DIY video at the end of this one. Now, go take your LML for a test drive.